Good morning. Today we're going to learn how to solder. All right, let's dive right in. So the first thing you want to do once you've heated up your soldering iron is clean it. Uh, when a soldering iron is put away, uh, it's going to cool down from very hot to, to room temperature. And during that period of time, the surface of the iron is going to become oxidized. You can see the tip of mine does not look terribly shiny there. So the first thing you do in cleaning it off is you scrape it on a sponge. Uh, these uh, brass pot scouring pads are excellent for this, uh, as they're not hard enough to damage the iron, but you can scrape the oxidation off. Uh, a wet sponge is the most common, however. Uh, you can see that I put my solder into a mug uh, just to hold it, and uh, uh, looped it through the handle so I can pull on it without having to worry about this rolling off the table on me. Now, first thing we're going to do in cleaning is use the flux, which is a deoxidizing agent built into the solder, uh, which you can see here is 1.8%. Um, and using that flux to clean the oxidation off the tip. Now the smoke coming off here is uh, as necessary as it is not good to breathe. So you don't want to breathe that smoke in. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're using lead-free solder, it's still going to have that smoke because it's still going to have a deoxidizing agent and that smoke is still not good to breathe. So uh, what we've done here is we put a big blob of solder on the tip of the iron uh, and it just sort of sits there, and what we're doing is using the smoke as it comes off to clean the tip. As it's smoking, it is cleaning. That's a really important distinction. If it's not smoking, it's not cleaning anymore, which means you're also not going to be able to solder anymore. So making sure that that flux is fresh is an important uh, part of, of the game. So now that we're done uh, uh, cleaning the tip, we're ready to get started. Uh, you can see how my iron is now shiny at the tip. Ooh, shiny. Uh, uh, we're ready to uh, get started actually soldering. So let's set up the microscope camera. Okay, let's get started soldering our joint. Now, first thing you want to notice is that I'm going to take the tip and put it between the pin and the board. That I am both touching the board and the pin at the same time. I'm also touching the second pin that I'm going to solder next with my iron. I'm preheating that second pin. Uh, it does take a significant amount of time to actually heat up both the board and the pin. Uh, me talking here while I'm holding this is not merely wasting time. I'm actually waiting for it to heat up. It can take 15-20 seconds uh, uh, depending on the iron, uh, up to 30 seconds if it's a kind of slow iron. Uh, slow being a uh, low amount of thermal mass for transferring heat to the board. Once it is ready, however, the solder should not touch the iron and should instead flow from the tip directly to the board and the pin. Let the board and the pin work together to melt all that solder into place. And if you don't get a really good solder joint, like that one doesn't look super great, you can always go and touch it up, heat it back up again to get it to remelt. Now, if your iron starts to look like mine does here, uh, it's a little bit gray and not quite shiny anymore, uh, that's how you know it's time to clean it and get it shiny again. See? There you go. Time to, time to make it shiny. If you're soldering continuously, the flowing solder should keep the oxidation low with the deoxidizer flowing from the iron, uh, from the uh, solder onto the tip of the iron as you go, making sure that you have good contact between the iron and the pin below. Now I'm right-handed, which means I'm holding this iron in my right hand, and I'm moving from left to right so that my iron, as I'm soldering this pin, is preheating the pin over here, and a little bit preheating this pin as well. Uh, if you're really good, you can get the iron to touch two or three pins, and 
simply solder while dragging your iron across. Um, you can see I did a whole bunch of joints really, really quickly. Uh, and then if you're careful about preheating the pins as you go, uh, soldering can go very, very fast. Now let's take a look at the shape of some of these pins uh, and their associated solder joints. So you can see what looks like a fillet of solder between the pin and the board. Uh, this one right here at the, at the very beginning probably is a little light on solder. because you can see as I look at it, I can kind of see a divot there, which you really shouldn't see. So I had a little bit more solder. And now that one has the correct shape along with the rest of them. Here, let's zoom way in on that then. See how that's shaped? Like a little volcano between the board and the pin. Good. So now let's take a look at a few pins that were not soldered correctly. Uh, the ones that were not soldered correctly uh, were done by a student, and we'll just take a quick look at those. Uh, however, before we begin uh, uh, showing the bad pins, I should do what uh, uh, everyone should do if they're not going to be soldering for more than uh, uh, a few minutes. You should re-tin the tip. You can see I let it sit for a little too long, so you, all that gross black solder is already building up. Uh, black oxidation is building up. Clean it off. Get a nice fresh blob on there. And the goal is to put it away with a nice big blob of solder on it. So that when you're ready to begin next time, instead of having to deoxidize it, uh, what you're actually doing is just cleaning all this gross blob of solder off from the last time, but that solder protects the tip so that you're ready to begin soldering immediately. So taking a few seconds at the end, uh, or when you're going to be done, you're not soldering for the next 60 seconds, 60 seconds is the limit there, uh, you put a nice big blob of solder on and just put the iron away. All right. Let's take a look at some uh, less good joints now. All right, so this is a circuit board that was soldered up by an anonymous student. And uh, they tried to solder some wires to boards, which is uh, was the instruction. Uh, but we'll, we'll take a look at the top and see uh, a few mistakes up at the top. So the first thing we want to notice is that uh, this wire is sticking out which means this bit of conductor is likely to short with something else. Whereas this wire was shoved in too far and uh, uh, is beginning to melt all around the edges as it was soldered. Uh, this one is inserted correctly. This one here has its, uh, has so much solder blobbed onto it uh, that it started leaking out the bottom and could very easily have formed a short with the one next to it. Uh, you can also see there's what well, appears to be some piece of loose solder, which will fall, <laughs> yeah, just popped right off there, uh, that can form a short. Look, there I am. I have just formed a short by poking at it. Uh, uh, now, on the other side of the board here, we have our battery tabs, uh, which uh, this one has solder on the board only. The tab was not soldered at all. This one has the opposite problem. The tab was soldered, but the board was not soldered at all. Uh, as we come around to the bottom side, uh, we'll notice a few problems down here. So the first one here is uh, what looks to be some mechanical damage. It looks like there was a solder joint that was mechanically ripped off, and they took part of the electrical pad with them. Uh, that can be difficult to fix. You want to be very careful not to do that. Uh, these are all examples of cold solder joints. Uh, the pin was heated up, but not quite enough, and it formed, instead of a volcano, more of a gumdrop or uh, uh, football shape uh, sticking on the pin. Uh, these two over on the edge here, uh, these are <laughs> shorted together, despite uh, the fact that they, for the most part, had not soldered things to the board. These two do look like they were soldered 
pinned to the board, but then uh, we're shorted together by this little bridge of solder here. Yep, that is fully connected. That is a short. Moving along, we see the underside of the wires, and we can see very, very long wires. These are way longer than they should have been. These wires should be trimmed uh, about here, and you can see this extending piece of wire is getting really close to shorting the pin next to it. This wire is shorting, is literally soldered to the, its neighbor, uh, just soldered right in there. This joint is a cold solder joint. This one is a cold solder joint. Uh, cold solder seems to be a theme on this board. Uh, and coming around, this is one of the better ones. This wire, which I'm wiggling underneath, is completely floating and disconnected to the pin uh, underneath that it's supposed to be soldered to. Uh, the wire is not solidly connected, it is just sort of floating in there, and the blob of solder is acting like a retaining bead and a in a ball socket. Um, <laughs> so this is, this is not a good electrical connection either. Uh, towards the edge here, you can see a few more uh, uh, cold solder joints uh, where the solder only touched the pins, never quite touched the board underneath. And so... These sorts of issues, uh, uh, everything with soldering, you can tell a whole lot just by looking, uh, by taking an extra minute at the end of your soldering job and looking very carefully at what you have done. Uh, it should look like this. Clean, uniform, volcanoes on every single pin. The only thing that might bridge in between is some of that flux. That means that we got a good flux uh, that there's still some of that rosin on the uh, on the board, that little shiny goopy stuff. That's a good sign. That means that you had enough flux that it didn't all burn off, which means you did not overheat it, and the pins are appropriately deoxidized, and so forming very good electrical connections. All right. Happy soldering. Making some cool robots.